video, we will learn how to rig a character's face using a free plugin called Tweak Angular so that you can animate the character's face in any direction with just a single controller. And this is the part one of the character rigging series. In the next lesson, we will learn how to add controllers to your character rig to change your character's appearance like changing the hairstyle or adding or removing the beard or some accessories or changing the skin tone with just a single button. So stay tuned for that and without any further delay, let's jump into Adobe Illustrator and let's check out the layer separation process. Okay, so we are in Adobe Illustrator and here in the layer panel, you can see I have separated each and every element of the character illustration in a separate layer. For example, the neck is in a separate layer, the shadow of the head is in a separate layer, even the face is in a separate layer, each of the ears are also in a separate layer. So I have separated each of the layers of the each of the elements in such a way that when I'm importing this illustration file in After Effects, I want each and every individual elements in a separate layer inside the character composition. Also, you can notice that I have separated, uh, I have kept few artwork for the hairstyles. So these are different hairstyles I have kept here in the illustration itself so that when I'm adding the controller to change the hairstyle in After Effects, I want these artworks to link with those controllers. Same I have done with the beard and also with the headphone. Alright, so now let's jump into Adobe After Effects and let's get started with the rigging process. Okay, so we're in After Effects and I have converted all the illustration layers into shape layers. So if you don't know how to do that, you just have to right click on it and then go to create and then create shape from vector layer. So let's undo it and let's lock it again. Now, let's start with adding a null object. So right click and go to new and a null object. And let's move the anchor point exactly at the center and let's align it exactly at the center of the composition window. And let's rename the null as facial elements. And I'm going to move it down on top of the facial elements. So I'm going to select all the facial elements like eyes, eyebrows, then mouth, nose, and even the spectacles and parent it with the null object, excluding the hair layers, okay? So first I'm going to open the position property and separate the dimension of the position. So right click, separate dimension, add keyframes on X and Y position property. So if you want to rig the face of the character, you need extreme poses from each dimension. From X position, you need two extreme poses and a neutral pose. And from Y position, you need two extreme poses and neutral pose. So this is the this is going to be one extreme pose and in between you can keep as many frames as uh, you want i want to keep like five frames in between each key poses so let's jump on to next five frames and let's add keyframes and let's again jump on to next five frames and let's add keyframes so the middle keyframes are going to be the neutral pose these are going to be the extreme pose so for x position it is going to be extreme left so i'm going to move it exactly at the left so this is going to be the extreme left and then at the end the x position is going to be the extreme right for the y position here it's going to be extreme down this is going to be neutral and for the y position at the start it is going to be extreme up to avoid any confusion let's turn off the visibility of these hair layers so let's select the face layer and let's open the shape path property and also add a keyframe on the position property as well and i would like to parent the facial elements with the face now let's add keyframe on the x and y position property of the face layer and also uh, on the shape path property Press U to open the properties with keyframes and let's add keyframes uh, on the neutral pose and one at the end as well. So for the position, I'm just going to shift it slightly this side, I mean on the left. And for the X axis at the end, I'm going to shift it slightly on the right. For the Y axis, it is going to be slightly shifted down. And at the start, it is going to slightly shift a little bit up. Now I'm going to modify the shift path. So for the shape path, uh, I'm just going to move the jawline. So the jawline is only going to 
uh, effect if the character is moving the face in the x-axis so like that i'm going to move the jawline for example uh, at the extreme left the jawline is going to shift a little bit this side and just fix the shape path over here okay so this is how the jawline is going to look like at the extreme left and now it's time to modify the shape path for extreme right and i'm just going to follow the same process and now we're going to add keyframes on the ear layers so let's select the right ear and the left ear open the position property separate the dimension again we are just going to follow the exact same process since the ears are a little bit backside of the face layer so it's actually going to move in the opposite direction due to the perspective okay now let's add keyframes on the hair layer on the back side of the face so let's turn on the visibility of the layer let's open the keyframes i mean the position property and let's separate the dimension and add keyframes and let's add keyframes at the start and also at the end so this is the neutral pose at the start we are going to move it in the opposite direction same as the year and at the end again we are going to uh, move it at the extreme left since the face is turned on the extreme right and for the y-axis it is going to be extreme up and at the start it is going to be extreme down okay now let's turn on the visibility of the hair layer uh, in front of the face so let's open the position property and again separate the dimensions and add keyframes so at the start we're going to move it on the extreme left same as the face at the end on the x-axis we are just going to move it extreme right and for the y-axis we are going to move it extreme down and at the start it is going to move extreme up and for the hair layer in front of the face we can also add keyframes on the shape path property so this is going to be the neutral pose at the start i'm just going to select this shape and move it in a little bit and maybe uh, slightly modify the shape path same on the extreme right as well okay now let's turn on the visibility of the beard layer so for the beard i have added a separate layer for the lips with the same color as the skin tone now if i move the playhead uh let's see yeah the beard is looking pretty uh, i mean it's looking perfect with the head rotation since i have already parented the beard with the null so we don't have to animate it separately okay now it's time to add keyframes on the headphone layer so let's turn on the visibility of the headphone and open the position property and separate the dimension at keyframes so for the extreme left the headphones are again going to shift in the opposite direction similar to yours and now let's add keyframes on the shape path property of individual shapes of the headphone so that we have we can modify it when uh, the character is rotating the head in the x axis so this is the neutral pose and this is the extreme left and following the same process we are going to modify the shape path of the headphone when the character is looking to extreme right and now let's replace this head shadow layer with a shape layer so let's solo this layer for now and let's pick the pen tool and draw a shape path and let's bring it on top of the actual layer so i'm going to use the neck layer as an alpha mat and let's delete this illustration layer and just turn on the visibility of the neck layer so let's parent this with the face layer and now let's open the position property and separate the dimension and again add keyframes on extreme left right up and down and also let's add keyframes on the shape path property and modify it according to the jawline movement okay one last thing that we are left to do over here is just change the direction of the nose when the character is rotating the head in the x-axis so select the nose layer and open the shape path property and add a keyframe on the path property 
and we are just going to change the direction at the extreme right so now it's the fun part we are going to link all the layers with the keyframes with a single controller so that we can control the entire face of the character with just a single layer so go to dwig angela then click on links and constraints then the connectors so click on the settings button and here you will get few options for the connectors the first one is a 1d slider there is a 2d slider for this one we need a 2d slider so click on it so here is our 2d slider let's scale it up so we're going to link the x properties and the y properties separately and we're also going to link the properties or the shape path properties with the x property because we have animated the shape path only for the x-axis movements so let's select the x properties and also the shape path properties and then we're going to select this as x so x is by default selected then click on next and click on properties so now if we move the controller in the x-axis you can see the entire character's face with all the elements are moving or animating accordingly I mean, I don't have to touch any other layer. I'm just moving this single layer of this single controller and it's controlling this character like a joystick in a video game. Now we're going to do the same for the Y axis. So first we have to just click on the cross button again, then click on those settings. Make sure the slider is selected and then pick controller now from here we have to change it to y and now we have to select all the keyframes on the y position property and then click on next again then click on properties and now if i move the controller either in y or x-axis you can see the whole head is animating like this so to animate the head or change the direction you just have to open the position property and simply animate it that's it you don't have to touch any other layer you can see how easy it is right now to animate this entire face with all the components with just a single layer okay now we're going to add a controller for the eye blink so let's select the eye and the eyebrow layers and let's change the color of the layer to a different color so that we can properly distinguish it from the rest of the layers and let's select the eye layers and open the scale property and we're going to add a keyframe at the start and at the end so for the eye blink we only need two key poses it's because we are not going to use uh, this 2d slider we are going to use a 1d slider so at the start we're going to keep the eye closed so unlink the x and the y position of the skill and we're going to give the y zero not exactly zero i would give it like eight percent and same for the other eye as well let's give it eight percent and let's select the eyebrow layers when the position and add keyframes and at the start when the eye is closed i'm just going to move the eyebrow a little bit down that's it now we're going to bring in another controller from Dwick Angela. So go to links and constraints and then click on the settings. And then this time we are going to click on this slider. So this is a 1D slider. Okay, let's move it and let's scale it up and place it over here. Now we are going to select all these four set of keyframes and then click on next. Then click on properties. And now when we move this controller, we can animate the eyes. And if we move the controller in one complete cycle, we get an eye blink. All right, so that's the end of this video. In the next lesson, we will learn how to add controllers to your character rig to change the overall appearance of your character like this. And I'm also working on a character animation pack with 6 plus custom character animations and a full body character rig with some customization options. So 
I will provide the link in the description and uh, in the comment section as soon as the template is live on our website. So that is it. I will see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.